Hey, we are back again. Uh, let's see the date and it's 7:20 Wednesday, November 21st, and it's 2018. Let's see. Today is it's not one hour video. It's a very short one. Hopefully between 10 to 15 minutes ish. And we are to look at um, the easiest way, like the fastest or like the efficient way to open programs on our computer and we are considering windows windows operating system let's say the windows environment and this why this uh, is helpful especially when um, at the point in time you have to use someone's computer you realize it's not arranged as yours maybe you have your web excel powerpoint or whichever program you are using on your desktop or you you go to the person's computer there's nothing like that and the, the option is fair fair you could like find you can search for it if you go to start uh, and whichever window from sp2 uh, windows 10 you search for it and you, there you find it um, but the it might be the easier like the most efficient or the fastest is to like use what we are going coming to do right now and in all this uh, is windows r you type windows r the windows key and the windows key is the one with the microsoft logo on it and it's at the right side or the left side of your space bar that is considering the quality keyboard is left side or the right side of your uh, space bar so let's say for example um, if i type notepad is open so if i come to your machine and i need notepad to do something i don't ask you hey mr x where do i find notepad no no no, no. like i just press the window uh, this pops up and i type my notepad it opens if i need paint uh, just ms paint and that's it i've opened paint uh, if i need write just write it open these are all uh, applications on the computer they are not on desktop i don't know where they are let's assume so but i'll just type the name here and then it it opens up automatically um for us and even for like website if you don't know you, maybe you look desktop there's no browser you check the tax bar there's no browser automatically let's see uh, if you can get us explorer and no this is not explorer but Maybe there could be a way of getting an explorer to let's see. Let it add it. Yes. Okay. Hopefully we'll try and see if we can get a way to open it. But if you don't know where it is, how to find it, or you can't find yourself to a uh, like browser and still want to open something to uh, a site on the person's machine. This same run can help you. Just type the good dot m let's see ghanaweb.com that is it it uses the person's default browser on the machine it opens it automatically so if you go to someone's machine or even on your own machine uh, cn cnn.com um, it will not open because it can't resolve it. it doesn't have that intelligence like browser so that if you type just cnn.com to add the ww to it so here you have to add the ww okay it's supposed to be three and then see if i had internet it will have opened it automatically and it uses the internet explorer because that is the default browser on on my my system so let's see if, um you've seen where to type it how do you get the names how did I know Notepad? I had to type Notepad and it opens. Is it because um, it's called Notepad? That's why I type Notepad. What about Paint? If you type Paint, it will not open. You have to type MS Paint. Then it will open. So, how do you get used to these names? Now, first of all, let's see. Um, programs on our computer, you can group them into two. Uh, or at least I'll group them into two for this purpose. I'll call one automatic. And I'll call one manual. And by automatic, I mean uh, it. You got those program right after installing your operating system, like the Notepad. <laughs> no one has ever installed Notepad 
uh, on his computer. As soon as he installed the um, operating system, whether it's from SP or whichever version, you automatically get sorry, you automatically get notepad. So those ones I'll call them automatic. And to know how to call those ones, you search for them from this folder. If you go to your drive, C, Windows, and then um, System32, this folder. So this is where you search for the programs. And the key to search for those names are to find those with exe, the name.exe. So that they are executable, they are applications. And to really confirm that you realize their type, is application that means a software you can run so this one the type is folder so this one the type is something else um application extension so you don't need those we need those with the file type of exe so those are the ones you have to look at there are a whole lot of them and uh -huh. so this is the notepad i was using and i'm using the word notepad because that's how it is spelled here and how that names come by depends on the one who did the software he decides which name he wants to use so let's see so these are the program that automatically comes when you install windows um, you don't have to decide which name to use the developer knows best so so the all these names if you try them here they are supposed to open so like ds die um, if I type it here, window arm. So this died. Uh, do you want to check if your drivers are digitally signed? No, we are in here. Oh, what have I done? Okay, okay so uh, so um, what is that? Yeah, that detected that there might be a problem addressing the system information. So the DS that, that gives you a bit information of the computer, um, the graphic, the sound, the uh, no problem with sound input. Yeah, bios show um, this has saved the information. So this basically gives you a bit of information about your computer. And um, if you want to, especially if you are going to buy a computer, people use it a lot. If you are going to buy a computer, and you want a quick way to know the information on the computer i just type ds die and then um, this one will come up and you'll be able to know the memory in the computer the type of processor in the computer and you got it from right from here from that folder we went to the system 32 and the spelling is dx so that is that is how you <coughs> you get used to and you can't say that you go and memorize these things, but the more you use them, you realize you'll be familiar with, especially those programs you use a lot, you'll be familiar with. Um, let's see if we can have a bit of meaningful ones. All these things are useful, but depending on what you do, that is what determines which one you, sh which shortcut you have to get used to. Um, this is calculator. This is calculator and, um, this is a calculator and if you go to view you can pick the standard you can be the scientific the programmer and then the statistics so it it varies and we you just open it by clicking it and the, the spelling is c-a-l-c so what it means is if you come to run the window r and then you type c-a-l-c it automatically opens the calculator for you it automatically by default i think this is how it is in most computers so for those that automatically comes with the computer right after installation or if you didn't need to just give to someone do installation for me these ones comes by default there are others you might like when you open you might not see anything and the reason is they are possibly supposed to work behind the scenes not all the things that are maybe to 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 us so it's possible you click someone then nothing will show and this is for things you didn't install that like that came with the operating system or the windows you install now if you want to know like the application like you mostly use like word excel powerpoint and 
those ones do go to their respective folders whichever editing tool you are using or developer tools you are using those shortcut to go to those uh, respective folders so like for word or for the microsoft suite we normally use a lot it, it resides here instead of going here you rather go either here or here and then where you will go depending on which version of that software you install whether you install 32 bit or you install 64 bit and uh, if you don't know these differences just ignore that means uh, it's something for another day but let's see if i come here that is microsoft word here to if i go to this folder now this is where they all reside and you can see excel there if you click excel excel will open so if you go to someone's machine and you can't find excel ideally this is where you're supposed to come you go to drive c program files since it is a bit it is the same represented 32 bit we know and then office and then office uh, 14. if it's different version my uh, office 10 like microsoft the suite i install is 10. if yours is 16 maybe this can have a different name or if yours is 2007 can have a different name but if you finally learn yourself here you see the names used and this is excel if you click excel open so what it means is um if you come here and you type excel that same excel will open it's as simple as that that's how you find the names and if you use the lord you find them that you have to internalize it so the next time you don't have to come here now this is um outlook and the spelling is the same outlook so if i type here outlook it's supposed to open outlook for me um let's say um pub that is a pub that's publisher um, that is publisher it opens publisher for me and then and um, so basically this is how you find so let's say you use excel a lot so you just you know, excel you type it direct then let's see almighty word if you can find word so um let's see which one it's, it's kind of on your computer version so um this is how word is spelled word is win word so w i n that's win word so we come win word and it opens word for you so that is it if the com after installation those programs comes by default which most people don't use anyway so but there are a few people who still who are still interested in those ones like command prompt cmd and it opens command prompt you can change directory things like that if you search for it here to cmd you're supposed to see command prompt uh, not here but in the um, other folder the 32 it goes by default here you can search for cmd and then you will find it uh, the ax that's it here and i type here cmd because that is how it is spelled in the system 32 folder and i'm typing here excel because excel because that is how um sorry you, you can also use browse if you come here and you can't really remember for let's say for the first time you can't remember the program the name you are supposed to you can browse instead of going to my computer and then drive c you can also browse through here uh, through browse and then go to that right foot place and search for the program to to load and that basically that is it so access if you want to open access is uh, access and it's access and to open access for you and uh, you see access is let me see um if i type um, ms uh, access is small c e s s it's still open like either in capital letters or in small letters it's still open so it doesn't matter the name you type whether it's capital you're typing a small or it's small you're typing it's capital or it's capital you're typing it mix it doesn't matter so technically you say it is not case sensitive it's not case sensitive and what it that what it means is if someone give if you give that name to tell someone who will type it in excel the person can decide to say capital excel or small excel is the way so like like uh, email emails are not case sensitive like so you don't give your email to someone and tell him 
uh, or like let me write your email then you say uh, I was a Kaunda, then you ask me the capital K or small K, no, no, it doesn't matter. Emails are not case sensitive. So either you type it capital letters or you type it small letter, it will work. But passwords are case sensitive. Your own password, of course, I'll not give you mine. So your own password, if you type it capital letter, there is a K in it and you type it capital letter. Later, if you are typing and you make it small, it won't work. So, passwords are key sensitive, but these names are not, and your emails are not. And mostly, uh, usernames are also not key sensitive. Usernames are mostly not key sensitive. Occasionally, you can find there is always that gray area, but for emails, I've never come email that is, that is key sensitive. All emails are. Uh, not case sensitive so basically that is that is it uh, it for for today we just look at a simple way to open programs on your computer first start you might go a little bit slow but the more you use you realize these things are very very handy especially uh, you go to cafe you, you just type uh, win word and then you open it and if you type win word it doesn't open that mean win word, when word is not installed on that computer it's, it's simple as that you don't even have to ask we have word if you just type and you can find when doesn't pop up like you type word and instead of um showing it up it's like it will tell you something like uh, when word you can't find so that means it's not on that computer so that's what you just look at and you've seen even you can use it to open so many like whatever websites you want to open you can type it right here you don't have to go and search for browser the system we use that browser for you so basically this is what we have for today and it's already 7 14 uh, 42 and it's time for it so have a nice day